What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Scale News Update. If you're not familiar with the show, this is where we talk about the news topics that happened in the scale world of RC over the past week. If you enjoy the Scale News Update, hit the like button, and let's jump into this week's episode. First for this week, we'll jump right into it. Axial released the kit version of the Rift. Now, this was kind of known that it was coming out since almost before the regular RTR Rift was coming out. The manual for the Rift kit got leaked before the release of the Rift RTR. So this had been out there, but it's finally available now. Now this one does have a number of differences between the RTR. This one does come in the gray plastic. We've seen the gray plastic available separately already, but in the kit, that's what you get. Now this is a light gray plastic that is dyeable. We've already seen people like Matt from the Scale Builders Guild dye his before assembling. Now, alongside of the differences of the plastic color, there's also a number of upgrades included with the kit. You do get the metal link plates for the trailing arms. You get sway bar options. You also get a spool. You can put the included spool into any of the three diffs, front, center, or rear, that's up to your choosing. Also inside the kit, you have the ability of a two speed. Now you can build it as a single speed if that's not your thing, or the two speed parts are all in there. Now, just like most kits, no electronics are included and you'll have to paint the included panels. But this is nice that it kind of gets back to the roots of what a lot of kits used to be, where you had the basic RTR version and then a kit version had upgrades included. So. Now we've got that option. It looks like pre-orders are open now and you're gonna be able to get these before too long. Next, we've got another solid axle release, this time from Kyosho. Kyosho brought back the USA One in both the gas power and electric power versions. Now this uses the same solid axles that were used on like the Mad Force and the Mad Crusher and the Twin Force. Long time standing with these axles under Kyosho vehicles. These are beefy axles though. This re-release sees the same body. It's got hard molded plastic details for the grill. It's got tail lights, headlights, the big chrome bumpers, the whole deal. And of course, like we mentioned, available in both electric power and nitro. So if you're looking for a solid axle basher, this one's for you. Solid platform altogether. And again, the solid axle fun versus the traditional independent suspension, whole different driving experience worth checking out if you're just looking for something new. A long time ago, we talked about this new release from Associated, and that is the SR10, their dirt oval car, and it's finally available. This one took a long time to actually become available from the date of announcement. Now, this is not the same as the DR10. It actually runs a shorter wheelbase overall, so not exactly the same car underneath, but it does have some interchangeability between them. So upgrade parts for one versus another may work for you. Now, this does come with the same brushless system, as the rest of the associated cars in this kind of line does have a very similar tub. You may be surprised that there may be some dirt oval racing in your area. It is surprising to see how popular this form of RC racing is and how many little places have it going on. So see if you can find a local group on Facebook, see if somebody's racing in your area. Maybe this is an easy and cheap way to get into the community. Next, we have another release from FTX. This is the Outback Geo. Now this looks very familiar. FJ Cruiser style, not officially licensed to Pierce, but about as close as you're gonna get right now. Now FTX is never a brand that catches on much in the United States. It seems to be more of a European brand. And even then it appears that FTX's prices are sometimes higher than what you can get basically the same car under a different name from somewhere else. But often they do have a new release that may not be exactly available through another brand yet. So in this case, this may be one that fits that bill. This one seems to be checking a lot of the boxes that are popular in scale right now. It's got fairly small pumpkins. They are centered front and rear. It's got a number of scale accessories. It does have lights and it's got a LCG split transmission, they call it, which basically means it's kind of a divorced setup with a more forward motor and a separate transfer case. They do tout this one as their most capable scale crawler yet. So here it is, the very top of FTX's lineup. If FTX is a brand that's well supported in your area, or maybe you've had good luck with them in the past, then maybe their newest offering is one you want to compare against some of the other models you may be shopping for. For those of you into 3D printing, Hemistorm 
also jumping into the 3D printing world, recently posted up a video. And in that video, he outlined a bit of a new competition that is kicking off. This competition in part is sponsored by Snapmaker. Now Snapmaker makes a combo type 3D printer, laser, CNC, it'll do a number of things. And what the competition they're putting up is, is they want you to take and build scale parts with a 3D printer, detail them up, take photos, and then submit them to them as part of this competition. The competition will be judged by Hemistorm and others, not specifically noted, but they have all of the directions on how exactly to enter. You do have to have a 3D printer already because you need to make 3D printed accessories and accessorize a scale crawler. This is specific to these type of trucks. You need to add the details to something like that, take the photos or video and submit them. It does appear that you get the chance to enter more than once. So the more you do, the better your chances most likely. It doesn't say that you have to have designed the parts yourself or anything like that. So you can go to my mini factory and download parts from somebody like Knight Customs, detail those up, finish them, put them on your vehicle, take some good photos or good video, Put that in there for an entry and have a great chance at winning one of these Snapmaker packages. I'll put a link in the description below where you can find all of the information about this contest as well as a link to Hemistorm's video in case you want to watch that and catch up and see exactly how his journey into 3D printing is going. Then for you small scale RC fans, Charisma put out a new 124 scale rally car. This one's got kind of a vintage style body on it. This is the GT24 RS. Now this is an all wheel drive brushless RTR 124 scale. Now 124 scale on road cars do require quite a bit better surface than most RCs. So you need to have just the right place to run these. But this vintage style and the fact that it's brushless out of the box for a really reasonable price does seem appealing. Previously, Charisma did have the GT24 rally cars, which were also brushless and had more modern bodies like the you know, Subaru Impreza. So if you're looking for a 124 scale, under 140 bucks, brushless RTR 124 scale, pretty cool little options. For those of you who've been fans of the WPL D12, that little key truck, K truck, K whatever, however you want to call it, those of you who've been fans of that little inexpensive RC car, WPL released a new bed cage for it, but it's a little bit different than what we would normally refer to as a bed cage. This is kind of a literal cage that goes in the bed of that. Then they also have canvas covers for it that you can get in several different colors, but, but kind of a cool little scale accessory to change up the look of one of those trucks. I've got a couple of them. They're just fun and like 60 bucks. So for a very different RC that is technically one tenth scale, Here's another inexpensive option for it that you can add to really change the style up. And for a little bit of no prep news this week, Beef Tubes released the new Meat Cleavers. These are his aluminum beadlock rear wheels and aluminum glue-on front wheels. These are available in two different finishes, raw aluminum or anodized black and then remachined for a pretty sharp look. These are advertised as 7075 aluminum. The fronts weigh in at 21 grams each and the rear beadlocks weigh in at 130 grams each. So jump over to beeftubes.com and search for some meat cleavers and tell somebody that out of context and see what they think you're talking about. And in Traxxas drag slash news, now what Traxxas gave us this week is information on the TSM system or the Traxxas stability management, a fancy word for their gyro assist. Now, gyros are not allowed in no prep racing. Traxxas, they came up with a system that doesn't work while you're racing. It only works when you're braking or you know after the finish line when you're off the throttle. However, I don't know if that's really gonna fly with a lot of organizations because you can let off the gas during a run and then it would technically kick in and possibly be an aid to you. So whether or not that will actually fly in competition, I would bet it won't, but maybe it'll make it more fun for people who are just not in actual competition or just racing friendly. I've been to a lot of no prep drag races and a lot of crashes happen after the finish line. So it makes sense in some ways. Maybe this will be a feature that is gonna be well received for those that aren't into the absolute heavy end of the competition when likely you wouldn't be using the factory radio anyway. For those of you in the Southern California area or looking to make a little bit of a road trip to head to an event, Dead Man's Crawl is happening this weekend just south of Horseman's Park. Basically Horseman's Park, but just 
right outside the gates. This one hosted by the people associated with associated, but it's not by associated. Also, if you're in attendance, it does appear that Element is going to be releasing something new there, a new vehicle, presumably, at this point from some of the social media posts made by people associated with Element. It looks like they're gonna have a new vehicle on display there. I assume that we'll have more information on that following the event or early next week. So we'll watch out for that. If you don't make it, I'll of course cover any information that I can gather from the event on next week's scale news update. Next, if you follow some of the full size rock crawling or you follow Laser Nut, the laser cutting company out of Southern California, they make a tire tool tray. So you have a place to put your tools while you're working on your rig or your buggy or whatever this is fitting on. But they also made a scale version. Now, of course, you may know Laser Nut from the scale version of their Ultra 4 car that Losi recently made. This is made specifically to fit those large tires that come on that Losi. But these also fit on some 1.9s that are of the larger size. It doesn't fit as perfect as it does onto the 2.2 tires that come on the low C laser nut, but kind of a cool little scale detail. Now, not gonna work real well for our you know, size tools, things like that. But if you're looking for a different type of scale accessory and you want something that's laser cut and TIG welded and polished out, these are pretty cool, worth picking up. I'll link to where you can pick one of these up as well in the description below. Now for this week's question, I don't know if any of you saw the live feed from last weekend where I got a VS410 that had been flex sealed excessively on the underside, including those aluminum axles and then just a host of other issues that had come up while I dug into that project. But I'd like to know what is the wildest thing you've come upon on an RC vehicle that you picked up second hand, whether it was a full vehicle, a single part, whatever it was, what is the most ridiculous or most heinous thing you've seen done to an RC vehicle that you got your hands on. But with that, thanks for watching the Scale News Update every Tuesday. Chief and I both appreciate it. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, subscribe if not already, notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. As always, thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Maybe do.